revolting news. Arabs and Jews are fighting again. Revolting news, who do you choose? Republicrats or Democrats? <laughs> revolting news, who gets whose? The rich or the, the poor? I think the rich get more. Oh, them railroads, that's changed a little. It's air, it's air uh, airlines. Outside of that, department stores, factories, mining companies, real estate, no. hotels. Breakfast, food, tobacco trust, and the meat trust. Autos, theaters, insurance, and banks. And uh, here's the madam, editor and the proprietor, and uh, obey the madam. And there's the business manager, special writer, city editor, managing editor, and the editorial writer. Look in the editorial writer, and he see it. And there's the guy saying, he's grand. That's madam secretary. Art Young. Be like him. This is an advertisement from the 1930s. Is your washroom breeding Bolsheviks? And my God, it's the Scott Tissue Towel Company. That's the way to prevent your workers from wanting more money. Put Scott Tissues in the toilet. Somehow it reminds me of the time... Uh, during the, the uh, submission of the Pentagon where uh, Barbara Rubin and someone else will go unnamed, Barbara's dead now, were locked up in the women's jail and they took the American flag and they shoved it down the toilet bowl. I don't know, is that illegal? No, I think just, no, it's not, that's protected by free speech. Uh, You'll remember this classic photo. I was going to, if you can show the top here, I was going to put the, I'm going to eventually put the picture of those two uh, young girl running, a naked girl, a napalm girl running down the a Vietnam street up here. But let me read you what this says. It's because the, uh, this is the important part. A cameraman has to keep rolling no matter what happens. It was something I agonized over, but all my training in my whole life had been keep filming anyway. Oh, by the way, this, this won the prize, you see, that's why there's that quote. Let's, let's go. Spot news. Execution of Viet Cong suspect won photography award for Edward T. Adams. That was a Pulitzer. Now, here's someone else. This is uh, Neil Davis. He says, uh, hey, keep filming. But he was a man. I knew him well. And he, that's Neil Davis explaining why he kept filming when an American soldier was killed in combat in Vietnam directly in front of him. Uh, now, here's the irony of all, right? Davis was killed, himself was killed in September 1985 while covering an attempted coup in Bangkok. Uh, the photographers get killed way beyond uh, their proportions. Uh, I know a well-known photographer who told me he wouldn't go to the war zone for all the money in the world, and I don't blame him. The so-called good photographers. Right? Yeah, I mean, in... in uh, in the Yugoslavian war, I think over 30 reporters have been killed already. Hey, get that story. It's 10 o'clock. Do you know where your brains are? That became the logo for uh, Paper Tiger TV. And then... It's 10 p.m. Do you know where your parents are? This is I, Witless News. Pa's on the pavement talking about the government. Mama's in the basement mixing up the cement. Don't know what you didn't do, but you're not doing it again. That's why we're all fucked up, folks. Don't know what you didn't do, but we're not doing it again. And our Witless News, it's 10 p.m. Do you know where your wife is? Hooray for Hollywood! This is uh, Spielberg, who sobbed. This is for the six million who died when he got his uh, Academy Awards. And this is that kid. I always imagine myself like that, by the way. 
And what is he saying on this postcard? He said, I went to the gas chamber and all I got was this lousy Oscar. Because it was for the six million who died. He only got one six millionth of the Oscar. Now, this finally got reprinted and uh, printed in WFMU's catalog. That's a good station, good, good catalog. You know, Indian, I've told Indian graduates of Indian universities often say um, PhD, uh, or sometimes say PhD economics, Bombay University, and then in parentheses it says fail. <laughs> <laughs> so these are uh, spots that were rejected by the New Yorker. Here we have, I wonder if you can all make that out. That's someone shooting up. Next, that's just an alcoholic. Worm. on uh, the Bowery. This is someone being held up. That you can actually tell. I'm an incredible draftsman there. Then we have a typical east side uh, apartment and then another scene at Bowery and Houston in the winter time. Man sitting in a fire. A better a old age home. The boredom of old ages. Old age. A woman uh, I'm walking around homeless in Penn Station. I understand they throw you out now after a certain hour. Now, my run is interesting. You don't know what that means because you're not a New Yorker. You know, used to, Paul Goodman said you used to be able to live in the interstices of our society, but when beans are 2.29 a pound, there aren't too many interstices. My run is a dialect for Madonna. It's an exclamation of uh, amazement on an Italian American. And here that's self ex explanatory. Now, um, uh, um, um, uh, uh, this I've always liked. I don't think anyone's ever going to publish it. Um, Sorel is a very wonderful, one of the best, if not the best, uh, America's political cartoonist. He did this ad for when Manufacture Hanover was still called Manufacture Hanover. And this is, is sort of, you know, you can see what this is it's supposed to be a bill because living in New York isn't cheap, right? But instead, this guy is reading this note and it says, My God, can we focus in a little more? He's saying, My God, America's greatest political cartoonist doing ads for Manu Bank. He's a lefty, you see, he does wonderful cartoons for the nation. Oh, I think he had some children to send to school. No excuse. Anyway. Now, oh, this is red in the original. Uh, this will remind you of, uh, of as, we, as we film this, they're preparing another farce in uh, Iraq. Uh, plague on all their uh, weapons. Uh, this was issued at the time of the first uh, massacre, that's what it was. This is part of the turkey shoot on the way. When the troops were fleeing, Iraqi troops, they had a nice car out of there that the Americans came and bombed the shit out of them, burnt them to hell. And let me read you what it says in very small letters here. Um, Iraqi soldier turned to ashes after being incinerated by a U.S. bomb. During attack on retreating Iraqi forces, a fleeing Kuwait. This was published in the London Observer, but uh, it was just one of many photographs censored by the U.S. media for showing the true nature of the Gulf War. Now, you don't see too many photos like that. Recognize the guy? Uncle Screw. He looks uh, alive, doesn't he? All dead, all dead, oh. This is a really funny one. This has appeared in that uh, Mr. Moon's publication, Insight. You know, he gets, he used to get money, I think he does, from the Korean CIA, but maybe he is the Korean CIA. Now, this is a uh, summary. A sculpture in the CIA's courtyard has presented the agency spooks with a cryptogram both fascinating and devilishly difficult. William Webster says this holds the solution, but even if it's broken, the author says another mystery lies beyond that. Then there's all this bullshit here. This thing costs $250,000. It's like a giant puzzle. 
and it contains ciphers and it's like you know for recreation for the employees and uh, you could feed the whole thing to a huge supercomputer the last I heard they hadn't gotten very far but here's we suggested another monument 60 sheets says 63s could do unknown victims of the CIA craps you're out 400,000 plus dead in Indonesia 30,000 killed in Operation Phoenix uncounted dead in Chile, Nicaragua, Argentina, etc., etc., a killer, a puzzling, eh? The funniest part was what recently came out. It seems that the CIA started FRAF, the organization they're now wiping out. So, uh, wow, what a... <laughs> the one that's, you know, that's killed, uh, uh, helped to kill a few thousand Haitians, and whose uh, leader just said to cooperate with the CIA and with all the new P Americans in there because he's still on the pay, I guess. I mean, he has a good job. You don't really want to... Hasn't changed his mission. No, he, he's, he, has, he doesn't have to uh, get unemployment because he's still... <laughs> he's still... You know what their excuse was that, well, we know... Uh, uh, it's better to have someone on the inside so we can... Um, know what they're going who they're going to kill is that what it is maybe they get some tips huh? yeah and tips on who they're going to kill mm -hmm. and we can prepare the uh, the graves for them unbelievable only in america now that's not true but america that's where we live only on earth uh now this is interesting it's uh by uh, alex coburn who got fired from the voice now works for the nation and uh I'd like to read some of it. It's the weather forecast. It seems that USA Today has that huge weather map. And everyone in Key West is pleased. But uh, they're pleased because people in Ohio can see the weather. And, uh, but not so long ago, AccuWeather, which assembles the data for the USA Today map, sued USA Today for running weather reports that were two days old. USA Today said that that was the quickest they could process the information from AccuWeather and get the nice map figured out. And then in the beginning he says you can't, uh, you can't figure out that uh, the date of a, uh, a magazine because they always date it ahead, so there's a lie right there. Then... Uh, Americans don't want a truthful press. More people read Gene Dixon than read the editorials in the Times. Most Americans like their news straight in the form of astrology. <laughs> they figure that if news is a theatrical exercise, a form of consolation in the miserable, cruel world we live in, then they might as well get the real thing in the National Enquirer. And Alex. Uh... I was sort of surprised and very pleased to find this in a Harvard magazine. Uh, this is, let's face it, it's the liberal Harvard magazine. Not, not the uh, radical, the liberal. I don't think Harvard has a radical mag uh, magazine. And this was their ad. The poster of the century, how to say shit in 36 languages. This guy took a trip around if near, and if, made it a point to learn the word for each country immediately on arrival. Cab drivers seemed to be most helpful. So he thought he would, he knew that other people would need it. So it's a 22 by 34 four color poster titled How to Say, Sh How to Shit in 36 Languages. And we won't encourage him by uh, giving his address, but Fair Harvard, that's, uh, and here's, here's a nice uh, logo for Fair Harvard here. You see that? I, uh, in the corner, I <laughs> love that. Uh, now the last in this section is uh, there was a song of the 90s that most of you won't remember but I remember it it was called um, it was there was a, a bunch of dancers and they were burlesque they were very wicked and uh, they didn't wear that much clothing and it was the song is called Every Little Movement Has a Meaning All Its Own. But I think every little meaning, every little meaning has a movement all its own. Every second stratum by some journal can be shown. And every brainstorm that comes appealing 
or our being must be revealing all its madness in some appalling little movement all, all its own every little and here's a list of uh, American radical and uh, Rita it's sort of fun let's read it back and forth Black Panther Party 29th movement Committee for Socialist Organized Communist Party Communist Labor Party Communist Party, Marxist-Leninist, Democratic Socialist, League for Proletarian Socialism, the, uh, the American movement, the new movement for a new society, the News and Letters, uh, the Peace, Peace and, and Freedom, Freedom Workers Alliance, Progressive Labor Party, Revolutionary Communist Party, Socialist Workers Party, Sons of the World War, Youth International, and so on. More resistors League. Yes, yeah, so there are. Youth International Party. Yippee! And I've uh, left out a lot of them. So every little movement has a journal all its own, but not a single daily paper on the left today is known. That's in the States, of course, in England there's The Guardian and uh, possibly one or two others that, well, that are um, really uh, left. Lefty, but I was surprised to find just yesterday I... I, I uh, read this and it was in a recent book so it might still be true but and Lanny you might know something about this Citizen's Voice is a uh, paper from Wilkes-Barre right? Uh, yeah from, yeah right do you know that that's a you owned by the union by it must be the printers and typography you know? I don't know. have you ever noticed it being particularly liberal or radical? Uh, I, haven't I don't read it much we're going to buy it next time okay, we're in that very region good. so uh, old fashioned graphics I hadn't even really picked it up really? Yeah, we better get one then. What's so, next? So, uh, continuing on our voyage through uh, newspaper Rania, uh, this was in the Times uh, about six months ago. Oh my God. They never get it right. Yeah, who took their sea out? Fucking New York Times. This is the old fucks at home. Police investigating the World Trade Center bombing are taking another look at the... I'll cover a few of six. Someone snuck this through, believe me. You can't tell me that this was the only photo they could get of that. Or, what, what, or was that important? Someone... Hey, someone at the Times. Keep up the good work. <laughs> <laughs> I once saw another thing at the, on the front page of the Times. It was the New Orleans... New Orleans band during Mardi Gras, and it was called the Half H A F P Dash Fast F A S T band. Say that over a little time. Half Fast man, got it. That snuck through too. Probably the same guy doing all this good work. Okay, uh, the New York Times doesn't work for the CIA. The CIA works for the New York Times, and this book I read recently said that, that the Times had actually provided press credentials and cover for more than a dozen CI operatives during the Cold War and not only that but Arthur A. Salzberg, a publisher from 35 to 61 was a close friend of Al Alan Dulles what a guy it's just one particular one company you know what the New York Times slogan was before all the news that fits the print what the times does not soil the breakfast cloth you know what that means it means it doesn't have filthy stories uh, I got their slogan for the 90s oh yeah what no cocks or cunts <laughs> they're trying to get hip though you know oh yeah you want to read this Lanny what do you mean no free speech you want to make your opinions known? A page in the New York Times is only 18720 bucks. And this just in. New York Times sets its 1994 rate for a single four-color Sunday magazine page, only 47155 That's $1,000. You pay a little extra, but it's worth it. I'll read the first, you read the second. Because of an editing error, an article in some editions of Business Day yesterday about the new law firm of Myerson & Cohen incorrectly described the financial status of Booth, Marcus, and PSA law firm whose partners joined the new firm. 
Booth Marcus and Pierce specialized in bankruptcy law. It was not bankrupt. An article in the Living section yesterday about duck research misidentified a center that serves as a kind of fat farm for ducks. It's the Cornell University Duck Research Laboratory, East Port of the Long Island. Quack, quack. Let's read this in tandem, you and I. The, the New, New York, York Times regrets that since the purchase of the paper in 1896 by Adolf S. Ox, that means Ox in German, its editors have presented a distorted view of American and world history due to the fact that they are part of the ideological superstructure of U.S. and world capitalism. They would hope to do better after the social revolution and beg their readers' indulgence until that time. How much time do we have? We have seven minutes. All right. And this is uh, the great editor, uh, Abe Rosenthal. When he took control of the third floor, he became managing editor in 1963. Uh, Fucking prick, cocksucker, bastard, get out of here and stay out. What happened? He had something unfit to print. <laughs> Good heavens. Uh, uh, I don't know. It's, we don't have time to do that one, although. Sure, go ahead. All right, let's just do this to blend with this. Uh, in 1985-7, in a secret military-style operation with the connivance of top American ATEC system executives, Rupert Murdoch, cosmo-megalopolitan pope of the media, moves his new computerized editorial and production plan for his four London papers into razor-wired, electronically-guarded fortress whopping, whopping. The printers and other employees strike and compliments of the recently passed lady, Thatcher, anti-labor laws, Murdoch fires 5,500 employees in one day. I think that made the Guinness Book of Records. And thus boosts his yearly profits by hundreds of millions of dollars. Hoyt de Vopping, Morgan de Velt. Now this is headless body. Here, here the Queen came to help him celebrate. The, he owns the Times, the Sunday Times, uh, Times Literary Supplement, uh, News of the World, and uh, some other junk. You know the. And here's Prince Rupert. Yeah. Oh well, he owns, he owns everything. He owns TV all over the world. Uh, he owns the Fox uh, network, and uh, he's soon going to own you and me. And here, headless body and topless bar. That was, that was the great headline in the Post. And this article describes how we, how the police uh, on on horses rode down. Twenty mounted police rode down uh, the pickets at the uh, at uh, Wapping. Uh, Mr. Tony Dubbin, the, the general secretary, the police tell us they are here to protect law and order. They, the law they are here to protect the statue's law, the order is Murdoch's order, that he must get his newspaper. Some of the worst violence came around 10 o'clock after the speeches had come to a chaotic end. Police on foot charged into the square with the terrified crowd slipping and sliding as they fled across the uneven and muddy ground. A group of 20 who had run onto the stage to protect themselves were attacked, while others who fell were hit repeatedly by police. One demonstrator was caught by the police, dragged to the ground, and repeatedly hit by batons before being kipped, kicked in the back by another policeman. He was taken away moaning on a stretcher under the television camera arc lights. Another great democracy. Okay, that will be, uh, that will conclude this section, uh, and Lanny's going to end our show with a song. Uh, you know, uh, Nixon's big regret, uh, was, so the uh, headline says, was de a bombing delay in 1969, right? This is from the New York Times, April 11, 1980. Uh, he said he's publishing the book called 1999 Now because I want to pass on that experience because before I'm too old to articulate it. And now the song. And now the book is near, so I face the final critic. My friends, I'll say it clear, stamp out my case, for I'm too arthritic. I've crippled lives that were full, mine each and every byway, and more, much more than this, 
I bombed them my way. KIAs, we've had a few, but then again too few to mention. I killed whom I had to kill. I drafted kids without exception. Well, except a few middle-class white college kids. I planned each foolish course, each crazy step along that highway, and more, much more, I killed them my way. I fucked them, they shrieked and died. I've had my fill share of abusing, and now it's grown subside. I think it all oh, so amusing. <laughs> To think I did all that, then may I say, and not so shy, oh no, oh no, not me. I slayed him my way. Uh, Mr. Dick. Yes? Yeah. Uh, I know you're dead now, but I... Was, I am? You I'm dead? Who can tell the difference? Well, I've... Well, I would run, but uh, I think I would probably be a little too lively for most of the people now holding office. Um, do you believe in throwing out the rascals or voting them in? Well, I believe the rascals belong right where they are, in our Congress of the United States. Uh, oh, you, you know, for my funeral, did you know that uh, the U.S. government keeps paying and paying even though I'm already dead? According to newspaper reports, my funeral cost $313,000 to the U.S. government, most of which apparently was picked up by the Air Force. God knows why. Well, they have a lot of Go money. Go figure. They, they have a lot of money. Uh, and don't forget, not only did I resign in disgrace, but my vice president, Sparrow P. Agnew, resigned in disgrace also. That's a famous first, isn't it? That is, the last, hopefully. That is correct. And uh, they were replaying recently a baseball game on... Uh, FAN because of a baseball strike, and it happened to be the day Agnew resigned. So they interrupted the game in the middle of the game for Sam Donaldson to say that Agnew pled guilty to income tax evasion, but he was actually really guilty of extortion and bribery while he was governor of Maryland. But he, uh, you know, he plea bargained down. Like, you know, everyone gripes about the way they plea bargained down. that, although you are one of America's greatest uh, mass murderers, you were uh, fired for wiretapping? Yes. Isn't it, isn't it curious? Yeah, uh, yeah, I think America a second-rate burglar. Guilty about that. Um, do you know that Reagan was about to be indicted, but he, uh, uh, impeached, but he told them, everyone, that he, was, he would be able to sign his own pardon according to the Constitution, so they didn't... They didn't, yeah, yeah, well, what, go figure, right? What are they going to do that? Yeah, that Reagan boy, he gripes me, you know? 